I'm Andrew Miller. This video is a short tutorial on how Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer networking works, and I'll give you a quick demo on how to interact with the Bitcoin network yourself using Tiny Bitcoin Peer, a tiny 200-line Python script that makes it really fun and easy to connect to a random Bitcoin node and interact with it and play around and explore and learn about the network that way. So as you know, the Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer network is built on top of basically a network of volunteers spread throughout the world, but mostly in the United States and Western European countries. The number of nodes in the network never gets uh, above too much above 5,000, uh, at least for quite some time. The main purpose of the Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer network is to propagate information about blocks and transactions. Those are the critical parts in Bitcoin. And it does this by forming a random overlay network. So not every one of the nodes is connected to all the other nodes. Instead, the connections between them are somewhat random. And so it doesn't take too many hops to get from one point in the network to another point. Uh, the Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer network also lets you download the whole history of the blockchain by querying the nodes on it. Uh, and it also provides some useful services for mobile clients. So if you're a mobile client, you go talk to a Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer node chosen at random, and that's how you send transactions onto the network, and that's how you hear about transactions that you care about. Now, what do you do if you're a brand new node, you just download the Bitcoin software and you aren't connected to the network yet? Well, in the Bitcoin code, there is a short list of hard-coded seeder nodes, which are volunteers or Bitcoin developers. So one of them is seed.bdc.petertod.org. Now to get a list of peer-to-peer -peer nodes, you can simply uh, do a DNS lookup on the URL of one of those peer-to-peer -peer nodes. So for example, if I do dig seed.petertod.btc.petertod.org, I get a list of 50 IP addresses. These aren't Peter Todd's addresses, they're IP addresses of random nodes in the Bitcoin network that Peter Todd knows about. Uh, so it's kind of a hack of the domain name uh, query system, but it's pretty cool because there's some low-level libraries in C for working with those, so it turns out to be really convenient. Once you get the starter list of nodes, you form some random outgoing connections, and you also usually accept incoming connections up to some amount. And you can also learn about other nodes in the network by querying them. Once you've got a connection to a Bitcoin node as your peer, then you can interact with it by sending and receiving peer-to-peer -peer messages. So, for example, uh, if you send a ping message to your peer, your peer will respond with a Pong message. And if your peer tells you a ping message, actually you need to respond within about 60 seconds. If you don't respond, then that node is going to disconnect you. Uh, right when you form the connection, you have to do an initial handshake. So the peer who initiates the connection needs to send a version message first. And the version message has a little string about what kind of node software you're running uh, and what you think your IP address is, stuff like that. Right? And when he gets your version message, your peer will send you his, and you should send a VRAC message to acknowledge your version string, whatever. Uh, after the version and VRAC from both parties, the handshake's done. Now, the way that you learn about other peers is by adder messages, and you can ask for an adder message by sending a get adder message. So if you send the get adder, you'll get back an adder message with a bunch of other IP addresses. Um, it's kind of a confusing pun. Adder here refers to an IP address, uh, maybe some other information, not a Bitcoin address. You also get adder messages spontaneously. Uh, when a connection is formed, one of the peers will send an adder message to the other and that propagates uh, through the rest of the network. So you can either get an adder message in response to a get adder or just randomly. Now the main flow of data in the Bitcoin network is this three round in get data data protocol. So when you hear about a new transaction or block, you send an inv message, which just contains a hash of that block or a hash of that transaction you send that inv message for inventory to your peer. And if he doesn't have it, he doesn't have any item with that hash, he'll send you get data to ask for it. And when you receive a get data with the hashes of some items that you know about, blocks or transactions, you go ahead and send those blocks and transactions directly to your peer. Uh, so that three round process is the main way that messages in Bitcoin flow. There are a bunch of other message types in Bitcoin and uh, different interesting functionalities that these provide, but these are kind of the main ones. Now I'm gonna show you a demo using the Bitcoin testnet, which is even more made up than Bitcoin the made up currency. 
Um, there's a bunch of features in it, you know, features, uh, because it's not intended to really have any monetary value or be useful as a currency. And there's a much smaller number of nodes on the Bitcoin test network, um, and they are even more volunteers than the Bitcoin nodes. So if you want to do, if you want to play around with the networking or just interact with a node and see what it does, you might want to try that out on the test network first so you don't risk uh, ruining a system that a bunch of other people are interested in. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to use a, a tool I wrote called Tiny Bitcoin Peer, which is a fun and easy way to explore the Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer networking by interacting with a random Bitcoin node or testnet node. Uh, so this is a small Python script. It's less than 200 lines of code, including a bunch of comments. And this uses gevent and it uses Python Bitcoin lib. It contains a bunch of little tools for parsing a raw Bitcoin socket into simple Python messages and filtering a stream of incoming messages and logging them or reacting to them. It has some examples of constructing messages using the Python Bitcoin lib library. So it has an example of how to build a version message or how to build an adder message, just like we talked about. Let's go straight to the first function that gives us something useful to play with, which is random peer log. So I'm going to go ahead and just run this function so you can see what I get out from it. Uh, so this makes it seem like I connected to some random node, and that's exactly what happened. If you look at this code, it creates a socket. It does that DNS query on one of the testnet seeder nodes. And so by trying to do this get hostname function, it's going to grab a random IP address from the Bitcoin test network. And sure enough, that's what we connected to. Now this also will go and print in the background any messages that we've received, but we haven't received any messages because we haven't sent the first message, which is a version message, and we initiated the connection, so it's our job to send that. Now, it's easy to create a version message. Uh, if you just do message version like this, this is gonna give me a Python Bitcoin lib object for a version message, but it's blank. It just has zeros for all the IP addresses. It has a default, uh, it has a default Python Bitcoin lib uh, user agent version string and other default values. But actually this is good enough. If we send our peer this version message and see what happens, well, it's actually been a while since we opened it, so it's already disconnected us. Let's try again with a fresh peer. There's a different peer. Send it a version message and hey, it liked it. It sent us back its own version message, tells us what code it's running. So it's running Bitcoin Core.11.2. And it sent back a version message, a ping, which it's expecting a response from, and a get headers message. Now, we could go ahead and send it uh, a VRAC. It'll be happy with this, but doesn't have anything to respond to it. What else could we send it? Well, it sent us a Pong message, and if we don't send it the if it, we don't, it sent us a ping, and if we don't send a Pong back in enough time, it's actually going to disconnect us. Now, uh, it received our Pong, but that didn't actually satisfy it because uh, it's looking for a Pong that has a certain nonce in it. So I'm going to use the stream feature, right? So I have not only is the, are the messages being printed in the background, but I have an iterator. I can go to get the Python object for uh, all, of the, all of the messages that our peers sent me. Um, so there's my ping message, and this is the value of the ping message that it was looking for. So it's actually expecting a pong that has uh, that message in it. Let me see if it takes it this way. There we go. So this is what our peer wants us to send it, but uh, I'm afraid we're already too late and it's disconnected us. No, it's happy with that pong. Uh, I think we're going to be okay and not get disconnected for a while. Now, it's been telling us about inv messages. Um, let's see what else was in that stream. This is the get headers message, I think. Here's an inv message with a transaction in it, so we could probably send it a get data and ask for that, uh, ask for that inv message. Uh, let's try to send it a get adder message, and that way we can ask for some adder messages that it knows about. Yeah. Uh, we send it a get adder, and sure enough, it's responded with an adder message containing a thousand addresses. And oh, by the way, it also told us another ping we have to respond to. Uh, what else can we do? 
we can look at those adder messages. So let's see what else is in that stream. We've got another transaction, two transactions. Here's the next ping that we need to respond to. But I'll just let it time out. And here's the, uh, the, the adder message we asked for with get adder. This is a thousand uh, other nodes that we might be able to connect to. Now, most of these aren't going to be reachable because as I already said, there's about 250 testnet nodes, but we got back a thousand addresses. So maybe some subset of these we'd be able to connect to. Note that they're testnet addresses, so they all have port 18333 as the port. Um, that's really the gist of it. What else can we do? I'll show you that we have in this tool something that'll do some of the work for us. So if we do random pure rather than random pure logged, this is the more uh, full-fledged version. It's going to go ahead and do the handshake for us and also automatically in the background respond to ping and pong messages. So you can see when we received a ping, it went ahead and sent us a pong. Um, we can do things from the command line like a loop. We can do while true send pure out message ping sleep five sleep one send pure out There we go. So now we are going to constantly be sending this node ping messages, still responding to pongs in the back, you know, responding to pings in the background, um, and I guess just keep doing this forever. If we kept looking at it like this, we'd occasionally get more inv messages, but really that's all. Um, that's all we can do with this until we start sending it other kinds of messages. It would be pretty easy to start building your own client from this, or do things like spider the network by to sending get adder, getting back a list of adder messages, and then just, um, you know, why not make 250 connections to all of these and see how many of them are up? Uh, maybe in the next talk, we will give some examples of using Tor to connect to the Bitcoin network and maybe even do some experiments with denial of service attacks against nodes that we run or hapless test node nodes that we won't mind um, you know, bothering for a little bit, all in the name of good science. That's all for this video. For more information and for more content like this, you can visit my website and the course website for the 598 uh, cryptocurrency security course that this tutorial video is a part of.